All right, let's get started with arrays, especially taking a look at how to create arrays and perform operations between arrays. Arrays are denoted by square brackets. I can create an array of four elements, one, two, three, and four, and store that in variable A. If you like, you can use a semicolon to suppress that output back to the command line. Here's an operation between an array and a scalar. Each element of the array, 1, 2, 3, 4, is added to the scalar 9, and we get 10 through 13. Let's save that result to the variable b. Here's an operation between two arrays, a and b. And here's a second operation, a minus b. Let me recall the values of arrays a and b and see if we can do an element by element product, expecting to see 10, 22, 36. Now asterisk is standard computer language for product or multiplication, but that's actually matrix multiplication in MATLAB. We need to do period asterisk for array style multiplication. Let's try doing a reciprocal of each element. Again, we need to use array style division to make that work. All right, here's again a reminder of what B looks like and Clearly we can see that the reciprocal operation is being applied to each element. All right, I'm creating an array that's a little bit smaller than the previous or arrays I've created. When you try to do an operation between those two arrays, we get the error message that says that the arrays must be the same length. You can use functions to operate on arrays. In this case, the square root operation is operating on each element of array A. Use the who and who s commands to get a sense of the size and dimension of the arrays. Here we can see the number of elements in each one of those. You can also use who's to display a single array at a time. Size returns the number of rows and the number of columns in the array. And it's interesting to note that the result of size is in fact another array. So the answer in that case was a one by two array. Use length to determine the number of elements in the array. All right, next, let's take a look at the colon operator as a method for creating arrays. Zero colon 10, that produces an array with elements between zero and 10. Here's another with elements between zero and three. Use the double colon notation to indicate the step size. In this case, the step size is two. You can also use a non-integer value such as one half. Now I'm going from zero to 10 with a step size of 0.5. You can also cause the values to go in descending order. In this case, I'm going from 10 down to zero, and then my step size needs to be negative. So that way I'm going from 10 minus one to nine minus one to eight and so forth. Now everything I've shown you so far has been what we'd call a one-dimensional array. Let me show you how you can create a two-dimensional array. In this case, we have a two by four array. The first value two is indicating the number of rows and the second value four is indicating the number of columns. So we say we have a two by four two-dimensional array. Single quote is the transpose operator in MATLAB. That's the transpose of that array D. Now I'd also like to point out that these can be interpreted as matrices. In this case, if I do D matrix multiplied by E, then the dimension is those two outer values, the two, and we get a two by two. If I do the other direction and say E matrix multiplied by D, then my dimension is going to be four by four. Now let me finish up by showing you some other standard ways of creating relatively large arrays quite simply. Here's an array of ones. I can take that result and multiply it by a scalar to get an array of eights. And then you can manipulate the size easily. If you want something other than square, you can indicate the number of rows and the number of columns. 
A similar function exists to create arrays filled with zeros. And finally, if you need the identity matrix, you can make one of those quite easily.